Hi, this is Dr. Bharat Dwaj. I am CEO and Chief Doctor of Pedicus Homeopathy. Today we will discuss on one of the important topics that is ADHD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Normally the prevalence is 1 in 10 children. Out of 10 children, one child is going to be having this ADHD. If you take 100 children, in 100 children there is about 11 to 12 percent of prevalence. There is a strong genetic component for it. If your father or mother or any other blood relatives has this ADHD, you are more at the risk of getting ADHD. Normally 50% of this ADHD cases resolve when the child is grown up or he becomes adult and 50% of the children requires treatment. One more important thing to remember is this is irrespective of the intelligence. ADHD people are more intelligent. They can be intelligent at music. They can be intelligent at a, at a particular sign. So it is independent. So there is no dependency if the child is ADHD. It is not that he is less intelligent. If you want an intelligent child, it is not that he should not be ADHD. So intelligence is is completely independent of ADHD problem. The most difficult thing for a doctor is convincing the parents. Parents do not accept that the child is ADHD or he has some disturbances and they tend to ignore it. This is the most common problem we encounter. What happens this is there is a golden period from 3 years to 13 years. If you don't take the treatment for ADHD between 3 years to 13 years, this is a golden period. The neuroplasticity is maximum at this age and if you miss that window by not considering your child is ADHD, the results will be not so fruitful. So for ADHD, the parent should accept it and take the treatment within this golden period from 3 years to 13 years so that the result will be more fruitful in treating the cases. One more challenge is <clears throat> there is a fine line between other disorders and ADHD. It is also very difficult for a doctor to diagnose him as ADHD because it overlaps with many other uh, psychological disorders. Nowadays what we have observed is ADHD is more prevalent in adults as well. The incidence of ADHD is increasing in adults. The reason for this is multitasking especially multitasking with the digital devices. They are using computer, they are using phone, they are using laptop, they are working on something, they are watching TV. When they use all the this gadget at once. This is mostly leading to ADHD in adults. ADHD was first described by scientists in 1904. It means it, it is present even before that and it has a very strong genetics. And previously it was known as ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. And in late 1980s, the word hyperactivity is added and this disorder is known as Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And adding this word hyperactivity has changed the dimension. This is one of the major descriptions for that disease. And coming to the symptoms, first symptom is lack of attention or focus or concentration so these children cannot limit their perception what exactly i mean by this is for example you are working on something you are doing something so you should be limiting your perceptions you will get sensory inputs from all the directions you you get different types of voices from outside you get different types of taste different types of smells different types of visual activities around you and these people are easily distracted by them so rather than uh, paying attention uh, and being uh, concentrated they will have they will perceive more things than required this is uh, because of this they will have they will lack concentration attention or focus and these guys lack impulse controlling capacity so when you are doing something you have to control your impulse you have to limit your perception these guys are highly impulsive what i mean by highly impulsive is when you are working on a particular thing you have to control your impulses you should not be impulsive to stop this and do other work in this children what happens is they cannot control their impulses if something is happening around them some we perception is happening around them they will easily distracted and they leave this work and go to that other work constantly they will be switching between different work one more important symptom we notice is hyper focus when a child is given a task which he likes or which he is intrigued by you cannot disturb him so their entire focus is shifted to that work they will not bother about the surrounding this is hyper focus on a particular thing when they like it or when they are intrigued by a particular thing next one is attentional blinks attentional blinks happen when the child is working on a particular thing and he is so concentrated on it he misses the other important things uh, what are happening on his surroundings for example if he likes painting something he is so focused on it and any important thing a robbery is happening or some uh, adverse event is happening around him he will not be bothered by it and he will be so focused or hyper focused on it he misses the other important things in the surrounding these children lack time perception they cannot prioritize a thing so for example if you don't give them the deadline 
deadlines and there are no consequences of the deadline they will not have any time perception they will they go on postponing the thing but on contrary if they give them the deadlines and if they know that there are consequences for the deadlines they are very concerned about their deadline these guys lack pace perception lack of pace perception is they are not able to organize their physical things around them so they will use the pile up system they will put all the things at one place which only makes sense to them there is no logical arrangement of things around them finally what happens is this piling up of things which they think it is good for them will not work for them they are not able to find out the thing which they want and when they want there is lack of space perception for these guys these children are easily annoyed if you say anything or with the slightest contradiction they are easily annoyed or they easily become agitated coming to the memory there is no impairment of long term memory but for short term memory or working memory the memory which they have between 10 seconds and 2 minutes they have problem with it for example if they want to write down a phone number so they are not able to do it and they want to remember a otp they are not able to do it any number that contains more than 7 digit it is very difficult for them to remember and also it is very difficult for them to remember two or three sentences at a time so even though there is no problem with their long term memory and the working memory or the memory between 10 seconds to 2 minutes is highly impaired for these children coming to the emotions some of the kids are highly emotional all the symptoms which we have described will will not be found in one single child it can be combination of one or two symptoms or more than one symptom within each child and also severity of the symptoms also differs among the children and also within the same kid the severity of the symptoms varies based on their age if the age progresses when they are growing up the intensity of the symptoms varies according to the age as well one more important thing you have to remember is adhd is independent of your intelligence or intelligent quotient so a guy can be highly intelligent at music or highly intelligent in a particular sport highly successful in business but he can still have adhd coming to the investigations there are no specific lab tests or any radiological examinations for this the entire diagnosis is through observing the child and taking the history from the child it is very important for you to understand a bit of anatomy and a bit of physiology so that it will be easy for you to understand other things there are basically two things in your brain one is neural circuits and the other is neuromodulators neural circuits are the physical places in your brain your body has the physical parts right in the same way your brain will also have the physical parts these physical parts are connected through the series of network that we call as neurons the series of neurons connecting diff- different physical parts in the brain or neural circuits these both constitute neural circuits and these neural circuits run or operate with the help of some chemicals these chemicals are known as neuromodulators to understand this you have to understand two two things one is neural circuits and neuromodulators and what type of neuromodulators or neural circuits involved in this adhd there are two types of neural circuits the two types of neural circuits are default mode network and task mode network what is meant by default no- mode network there are three physical areas in the brain and they they have specific names for it first one is dorsolateral prefrontal cortex the second one is posterior cingulate cortex and the third one is lateral parietal lobe these are the three physical areas of the brain which are connected through neurons these are known as default mode networks in the same way there are task mode networks task mode networks involve two physical areas in the brain that are connected with neurons and the neuromodulator involved here is dopamine dopamine is a main neuromodulator there are other neuromodulators as well like serotonin adrenaline and noradrenaline but dopamine is the important neurotransmitter or chemical that is very important for our discussion for adhd then what is default mode network and task mode network basically there are two states of your brain when you are not doing anything and you are sitting idle so these default mode networks will activate so these are the three physical parts in the brain so these are excited when you are not doing anything when you are doing something your task mode networks are excited so when you are working on something your default mode networks are inhibited and your task mode networks are excited there are two physical areas of the brain for task mode networks these two physical areas are excited in your brain so there should be a cesa when you are not working your default mode network should be excited and your task mode network should be inhibited when you are working 
your task mode network should be excited and default mode network to be inhibited this is the normal physiology one more important thing you have to remember here is neuroplasticity neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to modify itself physically and physiologically both structural and physiological means secreting the chemicals for achieving a task but your brain has to be molded or both physically and physiologically so that you can perform better at a sport or better at a, a task better at some swimming better at singing better at dancing so the ability of the brain to modify itself for certain behaviors is neuroplasticity and coming to the etiology what is the reason for adh the first one is it has strong genetic component it means if any one of your relatives blood relatives has adhd you are at high risk of getting adhd and one more thing is recent which we are observing multitask especially with the electronic gadgets so you are working on the computer simultaneously you are watching something in the tv you are watching something in the mobile phone and you are doing your work so if you multitask this is one of the major risk factor especially in adults for ADHD and coming to the pathology what happens in your brain when you have ADHD so the first thing that is going to happen in these guys is they have low levels of dopamine dopamine is the important neurotransmitter in your brain the children with ADHD will have low dopamine levels this causes asynchronized firing of the neurons basically when the default mode networks are excited task mode network should be inhibited when task mode networks are excited default mode network should be inhibited there should be a seesaw action between these two when there is low dopamine in the system synchrony is lost both are excited at once or both are inhibited at once and also as we said the three physical areas in the default mode networks should be excited at once here what happens due to low dopamine is these three areas are not excited at once one area is excited other two areas are depressed in the same way in task mode network there are two physical areas in the brain these also to be excited at once in case of low dopamine even there is asynchrony between task mode network instead of exciting at once these task mode networks one is excited one is depressed so this causes totally asynchrony in seesaw movement uh, where the neurons has to be excited at once it will not happen due to low dopamine this causes the agitation in the brain of a ADHD child. This is a main pathology that is asynchrony within the task mode networks or default mode networks and also asynchrony between default and task mode networks. This is a main pathology because of low dopamine or ADHD. Basically there is no coordination between default mode networks and task mode networks. The, the coordination is completely lost. These children are highly prone to addiction. The reason is when they take some stimulant like cocaine, amphetamine, cigarettes, alcohol, listening to the songs or sugary foods, their dopamine levels in their body increases and this causes the synchrony in their default mode networks and task mode networks. So these guys are highly prone for addiction for the dopamine stimulant that are street drugs. When normal people take dopamine stimulants, there is the asynchrony in the brain. So that's the reason they become agitated when they take the drugs. But the children suffering from ADHD, when they take these drugs, the dopamine stimulating drugs like cocaine, amphetamine, smoking, alcohol, cigarettes. So what happens in them is then they will get the synchrony between default mode networks and task mode networks. They feel happy. That's the reason these children are more prone for addictions. They become hyper focused when they take dopamine stimulants. And coming to the conventional treatment, the conventional treatment for ADHD includes the drugs that are stimulating dopamine normally the street drugs such as cocaine lsd speed these are the names of the street drugs same drugs are modified in a pharmaceutical way and given to these kids the disadvantage of this is they become addicted for it these children have low dopamine when they are given the drugs that synthesize dopamine so at that point in time they become happy they become hyper focused and they become less agitated but the moment when you withdraw them the dopamine still falls down than the normal so they become agitated so they become addicted for it there is no proper treatment in allopathy or western system of medicine or english form of medicine for adhd where you go to a psychiatrist and take the treatment the major disadvantage with that is the drugs that stimulate the dopamine synthesis in your body or street drugs same drugs are given in a controlled form by these doctors because of addiction formation and also lifelong dependency on these drugs it is not good for the kids to take these drugs for ADHD and coming to the homeopathic treatment homeopathic treatment has the best treatment for ADHD there is no addiction formation and instead of synthesizing this dopamine artificially in their brain homeopathic medicine has the capacity to stimulate your brain so that the brain can synthesis its own dopamine there is no dependency on the drugs when you withdraw the homeopathic drugs there is no agitation or 
no complete drug dependency and it is also very safe there are no side effects of the homeopathic drugs in treating adhd in adhd homeopathy is safe and it is also very effective compared to any other system of medicine over a period of time in, with homeopathy you have high chance that your kid completely recovers of adhd and coming to the precautions what precautions you have to take for your kids first one is increase omega-3 fatty acids in your diet omega-3 fatty acids both epa and dha are highly beneficial for the kid who is suffering from adhd both epa and dha are found in fish especially in sea fish the fish that is grown naturally in the sea has higher amounts of epa and dha and if you are a vegan you don't want to take fish there are capsules available there are capsules made of fish oil those are beneficial you can take those capsules and ensure that that capsule contains both epa and dha some capsules are available in the market that contains only epa or that contains only dha but you have to select the capsules that contains both epa and dha in one tablet so that it will be beneficial for you the next precaution you have to take is avoiding oligo antigenic diet oligo antigenic diet is a diet which stimulates the allergies in your kids if your kid is allergic to any of the diet if you observe you have to strictly stop that diet even though there is some controversy with this concept some scientists believe that stopping oligo antigenic diet is highly beneficial for the kids of adhd so there is some controversy but there is no wrong in trying and stopping oligo antigenic diet the problem with this is it is very difficult to figure out which diet your kid is allergic and if you are able to figure out that it is well and good and if you are able to understand which diet causes allergies in your kids you can strictly stop them which is beneficial to the kid in adhd and yoga has a very important role for a kid in adhd there are two types of yoga which are highly beneficial the first one is open gauge yoga in this yoga what you have to do is you have to sit in a calm place and you have to see and you have to visualize a large area maybe your kid can sit outside the balcony and he can see the wide area in front of him for 15 minutes a day this is open gauge yoga the next yoga is introspection yoga in that what you have to do is you have to ask your kid to sit in a calm dark place and he has to observe his heartbeat or respiration or any other function that is going to happen in his body or any other stimulus that his body is getting if you do for 15 minutes this is also very beneficial for the kid and the next one is fidget toys fidget toys are very important for these kids these are the toys which comes in different sizes and different shapes where they can do some repetitive movements with those toys so that their stress is decreased these toys comes in various shapes and various forms these are very important which will calm down the adhd kit these include stress balls spinners cubes with different buttons there are a lot of fidget toys available in the market one more important precaution you have to take is these kids are highly susceptible for addiction they are susceptible for alcoholism they are susceptible for smoking and also street drugs like lsd marijuana feed so you have to be very careful because uh, these drugs increases the dopamine levels in their brain and causes calmness to them these guys are highly addicted to these drugs and you have to be very careful with your kid on this part and coming to the treatment at what age and how long you have to take the treatment is very important you have to understand a very important concept here that is neuroplasticity neuroplasticity is the ability of a brain to modify physically and physiologically means chemical synthesis level there will be some changes in the brain which happens mostly from the time of birth to 25 years of age this neuroplasticity is going to decrease after the 25 years of age but the golden period is 3 years to 13 years this is a golden period you have to take the treatment the neuroplasticity is maximum at its maximum or at its peak during 3 years to 13 years of age if you can take the treatment for the child within this golden period from 3 years to 13 years there is high chance that he recovers completely from adhd or the benefits are more when you take the treatment between the ages of 3 years to 13 years and also you can take after 13 years until 25 years that is also no problem but the golden period is the parents has to accept that the child has some adhd problem and they do not miss to take the treatment within this golden period apart from that your child should be given good diet enough sleep good amount of exercise and 
he has to be in a stress free life this helps him a lot and coming to us we are fidika somyapati we offer two types of treatments for adhd one is in person treatment and online treatment in in person treatment you can come to our nearest branch and get treated if you are not able to come to our nearest branch we can take your case either video call or audio call and the medicines will be shipped to your doorstep thank you